Hi everybody, I'm Michael. Today I'm here with my client, Bonnie, who also just happens to be my third favorite sister. And today we're talking all about gardenias. So Bonnie, you ready to dig in? No, fine, I will. Let's grow. Let's grow. All right, what we're gonna start with first is talking about plant characteristics and some of the varieties. So what we have before you here is the Gardenia jasminoides in the background. Just lovely. This is the classic Gardenia that you've seen in many, many yards here in South Florida. We're in April, mid-April, and they're flowering like crazy. And these, this little cute, cutie patootie here as a standard is the Miami Supreme, which is suited a little bit more for down in South Florida. This gardenia has a darker leaf than the standard gardenia jasminoides. And they all go by the common name gardenia, but each of the varieties have their own, and we'll go into go into that because there are quite a few varieties you could choose for your, your garden. Some of them get a little bit taller than others. The Miami Supreme gets, can get quite tall. It can be formed as a hedge or a tree. And we have this really cute one, like I just mentioned, and you can keep them in pots if you want, put them on your patio. And even if you live further north, you can always bring them in. Like say you live in Virginia or somewhere up there where you're lower than Hardiness Zone 7, you could always have them out in your garden space and then bring them in. To speak about the plants again, they're known for these, these amazing flowers. They're spectacular, they're beautiful to look at, but to me, for me, it's the most beautiful scent of any plant I've ever smelled. I smelled a million roses from Europe to, to South America to, to all, all over the United States. And the gardenia by far to me, is just spectacular. And all the gardenia varieties have different scents, but the, but the Miami Supreme and the classic uh, jasminoides, they have a very, very powerful scent. What do you, what do you think about the, the flowering, uh, the scent? What do you think about that? Well, I love it because it reminds me of mom. Yes. We had one when we were growing up. Yes. And it just makes me smile. Yes, and definitely. It's, it's very intoxicating, smell. Oh, oh here. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of intoxicating, back to the scent they are fantastic and to plant them or to speak a little bit about about uh, not just the characteristics but where you could plant them we recommend like a southeast side where you can catch those breezes from that come through normally in the, in the spring and summer that's a great place or near an open window bonnie has a porch over here screen porch and it's just great last night we were catching the scent it was just yeah, was wonderful really nice. and you could smell it from several feet away it's such such a great scent it's it's what this plant is known for yeah just that's the one thing you can't touch or it turns brown yeah, yeah you gotta you gotta be careful, be careful with them. if you manhandle them or bonnie handle them like a, <laughs> like an amazon you you can the the, <laughs> the petals will get a little brown mm -hmm. and but they also make great plants to put on display you can take a few and put them in water and put them inside your house and you will smell this from at least a foot or two away and so catching the scent right now oh the fragrance I can't I wish I wish you guys could smell how how powerful this is and it's not overpowering it's just wonderful yeah it's just Fresh. so spring like you know, yeah, that's just, a great, that's a great term. It's yeah, just so pretty. Light. That's what it is. It's just a pretty smell. Yeah, <laughs> it's wonderful. So uh, back on characteristics, both the, the Miami Supreme and the Classic will get to about six to eight feet. You can trim them. You can keep them low as a hedge. Or you can get them, keep them as a standard and grow them up to six to eight. You can, on any of them, you can trim the bases of the leaves to get a standard out of them. What we're going to be doing now is we're going to cut away and show you some additional varieties that you can have for your yard because these are tall varieties, but there are some that, that grow low. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll cut away and show you some of these up close, and then we'll come back and talk about planting. Okay, one of the cool gardenia varieties I want to talk to you all about is called Frostproof. This gardenia variety is the most cold tolerant and can, and can survive in hardiness zones seven through 11. 
The frost-proof gardenia features these glossy dark green leaves that are oval in shape and can grow up to about four inches long. Its flowers are pure white and double petaled, and those can get up to about three inches in diameter. She tends to bloom in late spring to early summer, but she can also bloom mid to early spring as well. The plant reaches a height of about four to six feet and reaches a width of about three feet up to four feet. And now onto the buttons gardenia. This variety has a compact and dense shape, so she doesn't get very large, up, up to about two to two to three feet overall, but she has these cute little flowers about an inch and a half in diameter, and they're single petaled, but very fragrant and, and really, really pretty. We've done a video on scented plants on our channel, so you could always check it out, and the Buttons, the Buttons Gardenia was recommended by one of the uh, sales managers at a Flamingo Road Nursery, and it's just a great, great gardenia for, for an area where you wanna have something a little bit smaller. Will do well in a, in a container or in your yard. You just have to, again, be aware of the gardenias in general want more acidic soils. Amy Gardenia has dark green leaves, and she'll get to about six feet tall and about four, four to six feet wide. So she'll get a big round, big round shape. And she's kind of cold tolerant too, like the frost proof. It's more hardy in the zones eight to 11, but has been known to survive in zones seven as well. This gardenia has double flowers that are highly fragrant, and she blooms in late spring to early summer. Amy Gardenia also has been sold as First Love, I believe, which is a trademark for this gardenia. So you may see them interchangeable, First Love and Amy. They are one and the same plant. On plant care, let's first talk about lighting. Your gardenia is gonna want between six and eight hours of sunlight. That would be ideal. They can handle full sunlight but it's probably best to give them that. And if you can give them more morning to, to early afternoon sun, that's ideal. Now, let's talk a little bit about soil. These plants are tropical in nature. They, they're from Southeast Asia and part, parts of uh, Africa. And they want, they want a well-drained, but a moist type of soil. So, so a soil mix that we like to recommend. Oh my God, Bonnie, I just picked up a scent. Oh, oh. oh it's breezy out here. Thank you for, for dealing with us because every day we seem to film and we catch these breezes and so nice. oh it's wonderful and so you guys this is such a wonderful scent so again for soil they want a well-drained soil but not waterlogged so you gotta you gotta know that you want to and what we, what we recommend to do that is add perlite to your mix and so here's the ratio we recommend we recommend 70 percent potting mix add 10 percent perlite to that that gets you to 80 percent 10 percent worm castings that gets you to 90% and 10% peat, peat moss. Peat moss is gonna help reduce the, the pH level of your soil. And typically in, in Florida, the soils tend to be a little more alkaline. Definitely down in South Florida, the, the alkaline levels of the soils are very high because of the limestone and the old coal recently we uh, grow off of, or, or most of Florida. So gardenias don't tend to like that. They like more acidic soil. And that goes to this problem sometimes you'll see on some of the leaves is where the ventral vein area will yellow. And that's because the plant can't pull the nutrients out of the soil. So you wanna have well-drained mix that has some of that peat in there to help acidify the soil. Plant your gardenias a little bit further away from the home, both for airflow and also to keep the, the foundation of a home's higher pH from getting into the root area. And now fertilizer too. You want to use an acid-loving fertilizer for your plants. You can, you can use a liquid right before blooming, which is like late March, early April, depending on your variety, because there's some that bloom at different times. On water, let's talk a little bit about that. You want to water well, but you don't want to water where the water just sits there. The standing water can cause root issues, and they'll they'll crap out on you and die. So that's that's the thing. Is that you want a well a, a well drained organic mix, loamy mix for your plant. You want to fertilize with a well-balanced fertilizer. You don't need to do it in the, anywhere from October to, to February, but in March, you can start to put some of these liquids down in your water if you're watering by hand to help encourage some of these amazing blooms. Now that we've talked about all those things, we do need to talk about pests. 
I know. So this plant, and everyone's going to tell you that they, they typically get, and I'm going to add one more to it, and I'm sorry, everyone, because I know for a fact that these guys get thrips, and I see thrips more than I see the aphids, more than I see the mealybugs, more than I see the scale, but this plant can get all of those, and spider mice. So you do have to be aware of that. You can get beneficial insects, like you can get ladybugs, and you can, you can buy them from, from garden centers, even online, get some ship, and then, and then have them take care of it. But thrips get, tend to go into the flower area. You'll see them, it's a little kind of black or light brown specks, and they run through it. But it's just part of nature. You just kind of have to, 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 if you have a healthy plant and it's doing well, the plant's gonna fight back a lot. But having, having ladybugs is great to, to, to do a beneficial uh, control of the plants. But you, you can also, since a lot of these insects are soft bodied, when you're out here with your martini, let's say, in a uh, Sunday morning or something, you can take your hose and with a little spray nozzle and spray the plant and it'll knock a lot of those plants off, or those bugs off, and it will kill them. So, because they're soft bodied, and so you can control a lot of that just with that, and it won't hurt the ladybugs if you have them as well. So, with that, I think I touched base on all the basic plant care needs in general because each of these varieties I, I, I mentioned earlier have that little similar needs. But what we're going to do now is we're going to rotate over into written care instructions so you can see everything summarized, everything that we just talked about, and you can take a screenshot. Hold it for your records on the Gardenia you have, and I, I don't know. I just I can't help it, you guys. I'm so glad. I'm so glad we were able to do this video. Thank you. This, this background noise is always something with us, but the scent. I'm telling you, it's just great. So we're gonna. Do you have any questions about plant care in general, Bonnie? No, because I did remember about a month or so ago. I did. I think it was aphids that I had on here, yeah, yeah. and I did have to spray it down. I just use that uh, natural spray. Yeah, you can use neem, neem oil, and we'll put that in the written care instructions. That's but a, it seemed that's, to work. That, yeah, didn't that, have any repercussions. Yeah, and so even the spray itself, is the, the spray from that is powerful enough to knock them off and, and yeah. kill them. Oh, so, okay, so let's go on to that, and then we'll come back and do a quick closing at the end. Thank you so much for joining us. Bonnie, do you have any questions? No, I'm oh. happy. <laughs> but if you, have, if you have any questions, please just leave them in the comment section below and we'll make sure we get back to you. And until the next video, bye. Cheers. Cheers. I love you. Love you. Please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And tell your friends and family. We post videos weekly. Thanks. Cuties, <laughs> Bonnie, look at them. Aren't they beautiful? Yeah, there's so many. Oh my God, you're gonna have a bazillion come out right there. Oh, it's so amazing. Love this plant. Gardenias, everything you know how to take care of them and also different varieties. <laughs>